In this video, we're going to focus on how we can create a custom legend at the very end of the line instead of at the very top. And we're going to make sure it's dynamic enough that if we have more data sets, it will automatically grab the labels and the color as well. So to do this, the first thing what we're going to create here is a line chart. In this case, I will only make one line, but of course this can be used for many more. And to create a line chart, make sure you get the boiler template, which you can find here on chartjs3.com getting started. Once you're on here, scroll down, copy this chunk of code, and you're good to go. Next, if you want to get the source code of this video and many others, check out my Patreon page. And of course, got a question, put it on Discord. So what we're going to do here, make it a line chart, save that, refresh, there we are. So the next thing what I will do is I'll just get here this single color here. In this case, this will be a black line here, beautiful. And then I think for the background, we just do everything black as well, straightforward. Next, what I want to do is I want to see or show this weekly sales at the very end here. So basically the legend will move to here. To do that, what we need to do here is a few things. Number one, we're going to remove the plugins for legend. So say plugins, legend, display, false, save, refresh. All right, that's gone. We're going to move it here. So how are we going to do that? We're going to make a comma here, and then we're going to say here plugins, and we're going to initiate a new plugin that we'll call, that we'll call our end line legend or something like that. Just make it anything you want. I'm just making stuff up as I go. There we are. And I'm going to say here, the ID of this will be that. And then I'm going to say here, uh, after data set draw, we'll say your chart arc plugin options. And then I'm going to say here, well, what do we need here? We need to use here our object destructuring constant equals the chart object in here what we're going to do is the ctx and once we have the ctx we might need the data and what i want is the chart area specifically position right and the reason for this is because i want to be here at the very right side so basically at this point at the right side and at this height we're going to show here on the side the text of what is this? The weekly sales. So to do that, I'm going to say enter, enter. And then what I'm going to do here is ctx.save to save all variables above. And then what I'm going to do here is getting the item. So for this, because you could have more than one data sets, which means that you want to have maybe multiple text at the side, depending on the data set. So what I'm going to do is make it dynamic so that if you have more, it will automatically recognize and put those in there with the right colors, etc., etc. So to do that, what we want to do is first we say data dot data sets. And here, this data sets here is basically the data data sets here. It understands this. And then I'm just going to use here the for each method. And then we say here for every data set an index function arrow expression, put in here the items, and then we're going to break it down now. So what I'm going to do here is use another built-in function. So I'm going to create a constant dot constant meta, and this meta is basically chart.get data set meta. And then here, this is basically a function, normally index zero, index one. And I'm going to use this here. So it's dynamic based on whatever we have here. And I need this because this will give us access to get the coordinates specifically of every one of these items. But what I want to get is the coordinate of the very last data point here, whatever is the X and Y of that specific item. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to do also a max length. So we say here constant max length and the length will be what exactly? It will be just from the data itself, data dot data sets, or we could even use a shorthand for data sets. And then once I did that, 
Um, let's see what we could do here, or maybe just use that one. That's fine. Let's use that one. So I'm not confused with my notes. So data, and uh, this is the index. So it's here the data itself dot length. Then we should get here number seven. But I want to make sure this is neg minus one value. Let's see if we get the number seven. There we are. Then I say here minus one because of the array. So then we have that all correct. So now what we can do is start to put in the text here. So what I want to say here, ctx dot font. So let's go to make this a bold text. Make sure that this is a string value. So it's a comma, comma, or uh, in these commas here, a quotation mark. That's the right term. 12 pixels sans serif as font family size. Once we did that, the next thing what I want to do here is give it a color, ctx at fill style, and the fill style will be whatever we have in our border color. Remember one thing here, because I have this in an array, but we could just remove the array and just make it a single value. Let's do that one for now. So it's more easier, we don't have to consider the array, assuming that all your data sets will have the same structure, because this is based on that. So then I can just say here, data, or while well, you have here the data sets, and just say here the border color. So they have the shorthand straight away. Then I'm going to say ctx that. Uh, we can say here the um, fill text, because I want to put in the text. And what exactly do I need? I need here whatever the label would be, then the x coordinate and the y coordinate. But luckily, this is quite straightforward because we know one thing the right coordinate is here and then the y we can get and the way we will get it is basically of this item here or the metadata you can just grab this one we're going to say a metadata then we're going to get here the max length because i want to get the height specifically of this item not of anything else so the max length dot y getting this let's keep this label in here for now and save this refresh you can see we're getting something here but of course we have no space here so what i'm going to do is just force some space in here we're going to say here um layout panning and then specifically on the right side i'm just going to give it a hundred pixel fixed panning save this refresh there we are so we have enough space here we can probably push this a little bit down so what i'm going to do here with this uh we can say here right let's do here ctx that text align i'm going to say here left meaning whatever is the left side it will ignore and we'll just go further to the right and then what i can do here is maybe a ctx text baseline to put it more in the middle save that refresh all right that looks much much nicer and then finally let's give it additional pixels or padding to the to push it more to the right so we have this right here and then i'm just going to say plus six pixels additional save refresh that looks quite nice we could give it a nice color or, or do some not a background or whatever but i'll leave it as it is this looks more appropriate finally what i want to do here now is getting this text so how do we get this text well remember we are here in the data sets we can get here the label so what i'm going to do here is just say data set or this shorthand here dot label save that refresh there we are now final item is let's do the test if i duplicate this i have another one so comma and i'll make this 99 and make this 99 and maybe another 99 and 99 all right then i'll change the last two values six and six we call this our second sale save refresh and there we are as you can see here of course these are overlapping but then this works nicely and it automatically recognizes the color and the text of the label and that's it